in free fall, the acceleration is going to always be 9.8 meters per second squared when we are on the surface of the Earth towards the Earth. We will use 10 meters per second squared, unless I tell you otherwise, for simplification, since the math is easier. If we sh um, remember, this 9.8 meters per second squared is the same in value as g that we used when we said that the gravitational force, when we said fg, is mg. We said the magnitude of g is 9.8 meters per second squared. So what you need to pay attention to is that's correct. But an object is going to have a gravitational force acting on it even when it is standing still. So G in this equation does not mean acceleration. It means gravitational field strength. Gravitational field. Its value is the gravitational field strength at that point. Now, when an object is falling, it's going to have acceleration equal in value to the value of the gravitational field at that point. Now, uh, again, as I said, we approximate the 9.8 meters per second squared to 10 meters per second squared. <coughs> Excuse me again. If we choose the upward direction as positive, then we use minus to designate the direction. Then we use for the acceleration minus 10 meters per second squared. Usually, we use G to designate it. Personally, I'm not too crazy about that, but we see it quite often. Personally, in all my homework answers, and whenever I work homeworks, instead of using G, you'll find me using A and write minus 10 for the value. Okay, a couple of places where people uh, usually have issues about the initial velocity and about the final velocity. For objects in free fall, the device that we are going to use to get them to fall to get them to start the motion of free fall is going to determine the initial velocity. If you toss an object, you are going to give it an initial velocity. And the initial velocity is going to depend on the way you toss it. For example, if we do up and down motion, no sideways motion, then if you toss it upwards, you are going to give it a positive initial velocity. If you toss it downwards, you are going to give it a negative initial velocity. Now, if you drop it, you are going to give it a zero initial velocity. Three different situations there. But in all cases, the tosser is the one who determines the initial velocity. Now, we'll get uh, back into that later on, but if we decide to toss it sideways, if we toss it sideways, what we do, we actually give it both a vertical toss, a vertical initial velocity, and a horizontal initial velocity. We'll worry about those later on. For now, we'll stick with up and down, toss it up, positive initial velocity, throw it down or toss it down, negative initial velocity, drop it, zero initial velocity. The other area where people have a problem is the final velocity. And this is a little surprising. You notice, whenever I talked about free fall in the beginning, a few slides down, I said it is, free fall, it is in free fall from the minute it leaves the device that's going to get it into free fall, like tossing it, till just about it touches anything else. Okay, now let's try to explain what that means. 
when I toss something upwards, it is in free fall from the minute it's off my hand till just before it touches ground. The minute it touches ground, it's not in free fall anymore. People usually think of final velocity, what happens to something at the end. After it hits the floor, makes several bounces, and then it's at rest. But that's not in free fall anymore. It had undergone several other things before it came to rest. But just as it was about to touch the floor, it was not at rest. It was moving. That's why you fear things fallen on you. I have this video here just to illustrate that point. I don't think any of you would be, would be willing to walk out in the street in an environment like this. Because if you walk out the hail as it falls on top of you, it will not have a final velocity of zero. It will have a velocity larger than zero. We'll talk later on, it will also have a momentum. But the fact that it has a, vil a final velocity larger than zero is what makes it harm you. Now, if it was at rest, all of you can go out and pick up a piece of hail, and it will be cold, but it will not harm you. Now, an example. I'm going to work this example as part of this recording, and then we'll work other examples as part of uh, the next recording. We have a ball that's dropped from a height of 100 meters. What is the initial velocity? The keyword here, let me get this back to a pen mode. Okay. The keyword here is dropped. If it is dropped, me, uh, that means that the initial velocity, look at the way I'm going to write it, V and I for initial, is going to be zero meters per second. Okay, now here, I'm going to adopt the positive direction as the upward direction. The next question, what is its velocity? 2.5 seconds after being dropped. Okay, now what I need to do is go to one of my kinematic equations, the one for velocity. Velocity is given by VI plus AT. That's my equation. So here my VI is zero meter per second. My acceleration is minus 10 meters per second squared. And my t is 2.5 seconds. So here seconds cancels the square here. And we are left with minus 10 times 2.5. So that gives me minus 25. So my final velocity or my velocity at 2.5 seconds is minus 25 meters per second. Now the minus tells me that the object is going to be moving down, the ball is going to be moving down. And then the question here, what can you say about its final velocity? And I say nothing. Why is it nothing? Because I don't know. They didn't tell me where is it going to be or when is it going to catch, uh, be at its final velocity. We don't know anything about it. So in this case, we just say nothing. We need to get more information to be able to say anything. 